Hey everybody, I'm here in Sweden with my friend Nicholas, who is going to give you a demonstration that he gave me on an app that's for music creators. And I found it so interesting that I said, why don't you come on and do the same presentation for you? Nicholas, why don't you introduce yourself and, tell, and talk about this app? Thanks for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you. I've been watching your videos forever, so it's a real honor. Um, my name is Nicholas Molinder, a songwriter and music producer. I've been writing and producing music for 20 plus years. Um, at one point, I got so frustrated why I didn't understand how the royalties that I received, they were too low, there were songs missing on the statements, so I really, you know, wanted to learn more. This is maybe, yeah. Ab about how people get paid, right? Exactly. How you're supposed to get yeah. paid. So, I wish that I, I, I mean, I would love to talk to you now about songwriting and producing, and, but what we're going to talk about now is a super important part of the creation process. It's not the actual music making itself, but it's everything that goes on behind the scenes. The things that makes creators get credited and paid when their songs are used in the world. Me and my songwriter partner, we were pretty successful, so we couldn't really keep up delivering all the songs that were requested, so we grew as a company. So we started a publishing company and uh, signed really talented up and coming creators. Now I was on the other side of the table, now I was the publisher. That was when I realized the data and the information about who did what, where and when on the songs. And when we use this, the term song, what is that actually? Right. So all this got so much for me. So I realized, oh, I need a tool for this. Because as the whole music industry, publishers, labels, society, CMOs, everyone involved, they need to have the correct information about who did what, where and when. And there's just one group of people that can tell us that the people in the studio. Right. The, the only people can, that knows the truth are the people in the studio. So therefore, for my own need, for my own frustration, I created this platform that is called Session Studio. I have the great honor and opportunity to do this together with two giants. We met them both uh, together today, actually. Uh, we, so my partner here is Max Martin. Uh, Swedish songwriter, music producer, very successful. Absolutely. And Björn Olves of ABBA. Uh, so with those two, uh, we have created something that is really simple to use, help the creators in the studio do this boring <laughs> data stuff, <laughs> administration that no one cares about. Right. Simple, simple. Because but it's how people get paid yeah. for, their, for their music. Yeah, and we creators, we're funny because we scream, shout and complain when we don't get credited and paid, right. but we don't want to change behavior. <laughs> this is the funny part of it. So, right. so I wanted to, uh, to do something that helps the industry and the creators to do this so everyone can get credited and paid. Before I show you the platform, yep. I'm just going to give you the, a quick background of how things work in the industry. What you see on the screen right now mm -hmm. are five identifiers. These five identifiers controls the whole back office system in the music industry worldwide. Mm -hmm. If you don't know as a creator your numbers, because we're going to get to what the numbers are, if you don't know them and what they stand for and when to use them, you will get zero out of the system. Right. Wait, and, and who, who gets that money then? Where is that money? So the money, there is an expression called black box, uh, and th that is a term, yeah, that is a term for unidentified money. Unclaimed money. Unclaimed money. Yes. So today, the revenues into the music industry f from the consumers are back again. I mean, we see l big chunks of money coming in, but if the music industry, and I know it, sometimes it can be hard to if I say the music industry, but there's so many stakeholders. Absolutely. So, but money comes in, but if the receivers of the money don't know where to send them forward to yeah. us, yeah. we will never get them. 
so there they stay there in this so-called black box and every now and then and this is different from company to organization and where in different places of the world they do settlements the money is given out to the music industry to the publishers to the label M often most often based on market share. So the big companies that represent a large amount of So it of goes that. to the companies, yeah. not to the creators. Not exactly. It goes to the, uh, to the companies right. and not to the creators. Yes. Uh, so uh, And you don't want your money going to the companies. You want it going to, to you. you. Yeah. And the way to get the money is to understand what you see on the screen right now. Okay. So I'm... And <laughs> this is the most unsexy part of the music <laughs> industry. And the music industry is so filled up with acronyms. I mean, we see five right now, right. and, and they're the names of them, I'm just gonna go quick through them. So, three of these numbers are individual numbers for creators, mm -hmm. for you and me. Yep. The other two represent the song, the two different parts of the song, because now we get into, I'm gonna do this quick and not bore you too much about it, but a song is legally two things. It's a musical work. That is what the songwriter, the, the songwriters create. They do a musical work. Nothing you can listen to. It's just actually a score paper yeah. and the lyric and the information about who they are. That's right. And when you record it, you get the sound recording. So that's the two parts of a song. So if we start here, IPI, Interested Parties Information, it's kind of a social security number for all songwriters. If you don't have one, you will never get paid for, for songwriting. Right. With one exception. If you sell the music, so-called buyouts, then you don't need to be involved in this. But if you want to be in the system, you need an IPI. All publishers also need an IPI. When IPIs, songwriters, create a musical work, we get an ISWC. International Standard Work Code, which is the unique number for just that musical work. When we record it, it gets an ISRC, and that is actually the, the identifier that most of the creators actually know. They know, that's the one that they've heard of. Yeah, because yeah. you need to have one, because th that's the unique identifier for the sound recording, right. International Standard Recording Code. Yeah. And you cannot get your music out to Spotify, y YouTube, Apple without, without one. That. You that's need right. one. That's right, that's right. And peep, to get an ISRC, we need people to perform, and maybe we get into AI <laughs> later on, but now we're talking about people. We'll, sti we'll stick with real people yeah. for now. So now people are creating music, and then we identify performers, which is singers, producers, whatever. Because they're deserved money as well. Yes, exactly. And yeah. they have, have uh, IPNs in some parts of the world, international performer number. Yeah. As an umbrella, and for countries that not use all identifiers, we have ISNI international standard name identifier as an umbrella for all these. When everything is in harmony, mm -hmm. we, it should look like this. And we have an example which is Dancing Queen, yep. which Björn wrote together with uh, two others. You think that is he wrote it with one more, but it's actually two more. Mm -hmm. So when everything is in order, this is how it should look like. Three songwriters and a publisher, and Stieg here was actually ABBA's manager. But his role here is not manager, he's part of songwriting. So he's a songwriter on Dancing Queen. Okay. He, he wrote part of the lyrics, I think. Okay. So they have four IPIs, and th those four IPIs are then linked to the musical work Dancing Queen. And it's a funny story, it was Dancing Queen was the first musical work ever given ISWC, so it has one wow. number one. Wow, yeah. that's zero, amazing. Zero, 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 one. That's amazing. Yeah. And then ABBA did an original recording that has a unique uh, recording identifier, and they did a live, should have a separate, and all thousands and thousands of cover made on this song. And on all recordings, they, there are people performing. But all those recordings should be appointed to just that one musical work. Because every time someone's doing a cover of Dancing Queen, Björn and Benny and Stig and Universal gets paid as owners of the musical work. So, this is how it should look like. Mm -hmm. Even if this should be the most simplest musical work to keep track of, it has number one and it's one of the biggest songs ever written. Yeah. Last time we checked, it had over 89 different ISWCs for the same musical work. Some with different names and, and the links to the ISRCs, a mess. So, what I wanted to fix with Session was to solve this. 
if we can have all identifiers assigned, linked and matched before the first commercial release of a sound recording, mm -hmm. we are going to avoid black boxes. There might be problems, but we can always find the owners of the sound recording and the musical work and we can solve things. Because when we release something out to the market, information gets spread to thousands and thousands of databases around the world. So we can never update everywhere. Right. But if there's links from the beginning, it's solved. So that's why I did session. So a bit of education about the identifiers. I'm sorry if I bored you, but no. this is pretty important actually. It's incredibly yeah. important. Yeah. So how we solved it, um, we creators, we don't like admin. We just w we care about most of the time about one thing only: what comes out of the speakers here in the studio. That's right. the most important thing for us. So I wanted to create something that don't disturb creators, make it super simple, mm -hmm. and to give an incentive to use it. We call it a more collaboration tool. We know as music creators because we are music creators behind it. We know the pain points today when creating music. Mm -hmm. So we have added features on this platform that simplifies the creation process. And in the background, we do all this unsexy, boring stuff. So here's the song. Yep. Uh, Bjorn and I have been working on together with a few others. And uh, as an example, uh, we're going to start with demonstrating the platform with inviting you to be a part of, of the song. Oh, great. Yeah. So if you just open your session app on your phone. Okay. And I am an engineer, and what you see is Pro Tools, which is one of the recording softwares available, but Session Studio is available on, on all recording softwares on the market. Okay. And what's new here for, uh, for f f is that we have Session floating around. Mm -hmm. So Session is here. It's not a plugin. It's a software on the computer that lies on top. You can use the software with, it's not disturbing you, but it's always here. You can hide it if you want. Right. And if you hide it, you can always find it up in the menu bar. Got it. But now you walk in. And if to get all the information about you, so I get all those identifiers correct, there is somewhere between 5, 10, sometimes 12 data points I should get from you. Your full legal name, your, you know, where you live, your, all your numbers, and you have no idea and it's going to take forever. So how we solve that is by something called studio check-in. So I say, hey Rick, welcome. We just, you know, we want to invite you to be part of writing this song. And I bring up this code and you okay. just scan it. And scan it and see what happens. Okay, let me scan it here. There you go. There it so is. instead of asking you what's your identifiers, I now the, with the app ask you what is your role because you ro know your role. Okay. Uh, so you just add songwriter. Okay. Click on songwriter. And check in. At the bottom. There you go. So now the system automatically brings. That's all it. Yeah. And there you there are. There I am. Yeah. Wow. Together with me and Bjorn as a songwriter. Okay, so, but but what about my percentage on this? Song? Okay, let's get to that. We need to do stuff first. We don't know. Right. We don't know. Here, of course, I mean, there are some, uh, some things that we need to do to be able to do. When, when things, when you get those identifiers, you do what's called a registration. So some information needs also to be added. Your role, for example. You might not, we might not know that at this point, but the most common th role as a songwriter is called CA, and that stands for composer and author. That's a combination. Historically, 50% of a musical work was, was com composition and 50 was lyrics. Yep. Nowadays, it's more or less a mix. So I'm going to give you CA because that's the most used thing. Okay. And we see all information about you uh, and, uh, and when we are now saved, it's going to be clear when you were, was added, who added you and all stuff. It, now, is this part of the session? Is this online? Did, does this go somewhere to a database? Is it both? Is it on my phone? Where does this lie, this information? The whole platform is cloud-based. Okay. So, so from technical terms, it's Amazon Web Services. So it's somewhere. So, so it's actually going up to the cloud. Yeah. Every time this is updated, this is instantaneous yeah. then. Yeah, on, on all your devices. Uh, Fantastic. You know. And 
now security because I get this question yeah. oh, is it secure and in a second I'm going to show you who can access this what we see on the screen but my uh, one of my uh, tech engineers uh, told me like if you ever get a question about how secure our system is say it's NASA quality so it, this is encrypted and no one can get in and all that so so now you're in and now we can start using the 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 features that helps us during the creation process. So now we provide under the song title, the umbrella, this one umbrella for, for the song, for everything. Okay. Uh, we have audio management. So we have all the way from voice memo recorder. How many times have you recorded locally on your phone and you, you two months later you want to find that actual recording you did for a song idea? Every, pretty much every day. Yeah, here on on the mobile uh, app of this of the session app. Yep. You, the voice memo recorder is on a song level, so you can always now when I start recording, it's going to be here. Wow. Yes. Simplify the whole thing. Got it. And I if you have recorded something and you want to share it with me, you know, I, you can give me access to hear it. And it if I'm the producer, I can actually drag and drop the audio file directly into Pro Tools, and I can use your voice memo idea. So full audio management. Okay shareable we can share links if we want to share something externally and we believe strongly that no one should send mp3 files because then you lose control so we have shared links so and uh, that's how we give all the creators that are linked to this song access to the audio under one umbrella got it the most used tool on the platform lyrics lyrics today are, ri are written like all over the place you know uh, and maybe ends up on a piece of paper and then uh, if Bjorn wrote it, you and I have, don't have access to it. This is the best way for the creators to have the lyrics on one place. This will update when somebody write, changes something, update and it'll say who changes it, correct? Exactly. And as you see now, Bjorn is writing something. No, it's, it's actually Campbell that's in now. So it's, it works like a Google Doc. So it's fully dynamic and we can see who wrote what. And it timestamps who did what, where, and when. So we, the songwriters can always, you know, see who did what, where, and when on the on, on the lyrics. So this is a, an amazing way of writing lyrics. Transparent and, and th your publisher and the label, they don't have to chase you when it's time to get the lyric. You know, just bring it well, up. Well, this also prevents the arguments of who did what, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, this is really a big thing. Mm -hmm. Many times in the past you finish a song and you don't have determined song splits mm. and then people argue about them and sometimes people never get paid because they can never resolve the song splits. Yeah. Totally. And we're going to get to the splits and splits is a really interesting thing. So, but we get there in a second. So lyrics, super uh, uh, good. And one last thing about that. Today, even on Shazam, you get lyrics for all songs everywhere. Right. The majority of the times when you see lyrics on the streaming services, it never comes from the actual songwriters. It's companies that are generating the lyrics again because the lyrics are not there, available. Mm -hmm. This changes that. So, Then the credits tab, we went through that when you checked in. This is a list of everyone that in one way or another do work work one on contribution yep. on both sides, both on the musical work and the recording. Got one it. place for everything. Now split songwriters and i mean i've been in so many songwriting sessions and it's something weird with split no everyone knows that we need to talk about it but no one wants, wants to talk about it exactly so uh, if we a session do identify people we can always sort out the split later but the sooner the better because we avoid errors if we do it earlier. And if it's hard to look me in, in, in my eyes and say I want more than you, then we can do it here. So we have created a digital split sheet. Okay. If there was a previous split or not, doesn't matter. We just added you, so whatever was decided before, forget it. We need now to do it again. So let's propose a new split. Uh, Bjorn, you and me, yep. we are now the, the trio and now we need to determine. Here, it's interesting now because I get this question all the time. Can Session you know, propose a split? No, 
A machine can never ever propose a split. This is human negotiation. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, even if you did it all, and Björn, you know, was here, but he says, "No, come on, I, I'm a bigger name than you. I, I want more percent." You know, it could. Be, it, it, there are no rules for splits, so we need to talk about it. Lucky enough, most of the time, equal. I think equal is fair. Mm -hmm. So we have a split equally feature, and now you got the 34, <laughs> <laughs> which is good, and now propose. So now if you open your phone again yep. and, and uh, you go into the song tab yep. uh, on the left hand side yep. and click on the song, yep. just on the song there one more time and yep. then click on split. Now you have a proposal. Wow. So now you can say accept if you think it's fair. If you don't, you can propose what you think is the right thing. Well, I think this is fair. Yeah, okay. So that's great that you think that. Uh, and so now, and what the good thing, if you have a publisher or a manager, yep. everyone gets this information because we have created session so it's dynamic for usage, both for high level creators like Max and Björn and, and ourselves at the moment, but also it works for the new up and coming band in the basement you know, next door. It's very flexible. And I showed you now how we add someone. Wait a second. So I. My publisher is Sony ATV. So would they get this then, this information immediately? Depending on how you as a songwriter yep. want them to have the information. Okay. And we are, of course, working hard to get this system implemented in the whole industry. Okay. And uh, it's a lot of things going on in the background, how we uh, integrate with the music industry. So our goal is that, yes, it your publisher, if, if you want and they want, they can get it immediately. Got it. Yeah. But the system is very flexible and, and, and as I said, it works for anywhere on the what level you are as a creator. And it also works with a lot of types of, of, of situations. Now we demonstrate how you walk into a studio and scan the code. But of course you can use session if you work remote or with someone you know or someone you never met before. So it's very flexible. Anyhow, the split. Look, accepted. Even Bjorn Fantastic. accepted. Okay, what about the producer? What about the, the players that mm -hmm. are playing on the session? How do those get memorialized? So, in the same way as you scanned in, yeah. every contribution, everyone scanned so in. So, if we have a uh, keyboard player that comes in, a session person, mm -hmm. they have their phone with mm -hmm. the app on it. Yeah. And do they use the same thing? And, so and Exactly. Oh and we've, we've done an experiment. Okay. We have done this in London with the Philharmonic Orchestra okay. with 65 musicians walk in on Pro Tools boom, 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 and I just saw the contributions like uh, for the performance for music. Amazing. So before they start recording we had all their names, all their identifiers, everything is in order. Fantastic. No one had to use pen and paper and chase people anymore. Great. Yeah, great. So Wh now, Which is a nightmare to deal which with. Which is a nightmare. Nightmare totally. to deal with, yeah. Now you can download the split sheet that, and you're, if you have a publisher connected, uh, uh, they can download it. And behind the scenes, the industry is filled with what we call standards and different file formats. And that goes on in the background. We as creators, we don't even have to bother about that. Okay. Now, who can see this information? And that's really important because that's a security thing. Yep. So we have separated credits and access. So even if you are added with credit, let's say a session musician for example, mostly paid for coming here, do the performance and then leave, should not see splits, should not yep. have access. So every person on the access list can access this information, but only those people. Could be your manager, could be an A&R, you know. It's and you select who they are. Exactly. Got and if, since now you are also on, you can add whoever you want. But from the difference from how it works without s session, you can invite anyone without me knowing it. As soon as you invite some someone, I see it. So it's transparent. Got and it. That makes the, you know that's what makes it so brilliant. Got it. Yeah. And then we have details. That is information that session automatically pulls out from the uh, the Pro Tools file, mm -hmm. tempo, key signatures, and stuff if if available. Excellent. So this is how we collect the information, and. and we, from the beginning, I said, I don't want another source of chat and, and communication. So I was against that. But our users, they, we want to have a chat. So we recently 
also added chat so on a song level. So now all uh, people will like, now we can communicate. Let's lower the bass drum, or you know, when it in the, or oh. we should rewrite, you know, everything that concerns wow. this song. One stop shop for for fantastic. For a song. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, uh, oh look, Bjorn wants more bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is how we use the chat for for uh, uh, for communicating, and uh, for all your songs. When you click on songs, you get a list of all the songs you're working on. So Excellent. if you switch song, you know, all the information is there. You can go from, from a bounce, you just get in your car, boof, now you move to your phone. Everything is there. So it. it's, it's, it's a perfect way of keeping track of your administration, but also all the audio and lyrics and stuff. Now when, when the song is ready to be released, uh, we, of course, provide all the features for doing the release and send it out. Session is directly connected with SoundCloud today. So if you're a SoundCloud user, uh, you can connect your SoundCloud account and now, for the first time ever, upload content to SoundCloud with all the data connected to oh it wow. without you doing anything. When you upload to SoundCloud, normally you just drag and drop an audio file and the only information that goes out is the name exactly. of the audio file and, 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 yep. and the audio. But here we get everything. And if you're s you sign to a label, you use the label and, and the label gets all the information. The next company that's going to become here in September is TuneCore. So from now on, you are also going to be able to release your music out to the market directly from here with all the data without chasing people. So really great tool to use. And um, if you want to share music with others, there, of course, you can share music, uh, uh, share links on the song level, but we also, of course, have playlisting. If you want to pitch to a label, uh, if they're looking for new songs for an artist, you can put a co collection of songs together. So, um, so this is session. Now we've been spending some time just talking about session, but our goal is that the creators are going to be 99. Five percent here, creating music, and but every time they need to add data or do something, they're just going to click on that one and use session. Fantastic. And what you've seen here is free. You, we don't charge anything for it. Just download it. We don't ask for your credit card. Uh, and then the question, of course, what's the business model then? Yeah, it's a, a freemium model, so we give you this for free. Sure, of course. If you want to use multiple playlisting or, or, or more hard, uh, hardly space, we have subscriptions for that and then you pay for it. But all this is free because we want this to be a free tool that make, uh, makes the life easier for, for all music creators out there. So this is Session, my friend. Excellent, excellent. That was really well explained and I, I learned a lot from yeah. this. This is great. And now we're connected. So now I'm going to start inviting you to songs. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Good. So thanks so much for, uh, for, for having me. And uh, yeah, let's hope that we can do more stuff together. Be great. Yeah. Nicholas, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep.